I know. <clears throat> so like my, I know. Welcome. Look, it's Stevie. Oh. Well, now I have two, so I can keep one in the box and one to play with. Yes, welcome. She can, her legs don't really go up high enough to sit properly. Welcome, wow. termites. Welcome to me toes. Wow. Those are my Spanish termites. <laughs> oh, my God. Episode 165, it is snowing like crazy in Nashville. There's like seven or eight inches. It's the most snow in one day that they will get in an entire year here. I've seen snow here, but not like this. No. This is like Missouri or further north or New England <laughs> or... And uh, what I'm wearing right now, I'm going to have to take it off in a minute because it keeps hitting the mic, is a Spangles um, visor nice. that was brought to uh, the Wichita show by Termite. Thank you. I have received the visor. I am going to wear it in the Midwest if I golf. Just see if anybody notices, because this is an employee visor. Nice. Spangles, for those of you who don't know, is a Kansas uh, fast food place, family owned. Mm -hmm. They shoot their own commercials. They're on television locally, and they look like they've been shot by somebody on somebody's iPhone. Um, yeah, let's get rid of that for now. But I thank you to the termite who brought this. It did make me laugh. Um, uh, they so they have great burgers, onion rings. The bartender told me to get the onion rings, which I did. They were worth it, um, worth every calorie. But they also serve alcohol. Like I can't believe that this this fast food place. Like picture like a steak, not even a steak and shake. There's, I mean, there's in you can eat in there, which I have. But um, and I've been there before, but I like to go every time because they change their change their drink specials. And this time it was a vanilla Jim Beam and Pepsi slushy. Oh. Yeah, I got it. Well, here's the thing. You can go through the drive-thru, and they put it in a vacuum-sealed bag. It is such a Midwest thing to go, now don't drink that until you get home, okay? And then the person in the car goes, okay. And we just trust you're not going to do that. I mean, secretly, I went to a parking lot in front of a pawn shop and opened it, but then I thought, I don't want to put this on video that I'm breaking the law. Right. So I waited till I got back to the hotel, <laughs> and because that's how paranoid, that's what Catholic school will do to you. I mean, no, who's going to go to the police going to come track me down? They don't know where I'm staying. I mean, yeah. but they know where I have a show if they wanted to do that. Um, it was way too sweet for me. Uh, but yeah. just that they will give you. I know Louisiana has drive through daiquiris. Those always make me laugh, too. But you just don't see drive through liquor that often out of a fast food place. No. I like a cheeseburger, onion rings, and a Jim Beam slushy. What? <laughs> What? Now, they have a screwdriver slushy that I really did like. I got that last time. I think it was a mimosa and a screwdriver slushy. Um, but I like that they trust me. Yeah. Don't drink. It is vacuum sealed a little bit, but I, you can rip it apart. I did rip it apart. How <laughs> were mm. the onion rings? The onion rings were great. Wichita was so cold. It I don't know. Below zero. Four. Yeah. Felt like 20 up. below. So I didn't really do much. I was going to go try to see the house of the BTK killer because I'm kind of obsessed with serial killers, but they wrecked it. Yeah. And the bartender told me it was he he's in a suburb of Wichita, but it was like another, I don't know, 30 minutes from where I was at. Mm -hmm. So I and it's just an empty lot now, mm -hmm. you know, but I that, that if you don't know who the BTK killer is, um, you can Google that for the younger uh, termites. The children, if you don't know, <laughs> he was a Kansas serial killer. And then if you go, his the real name was Dennis Radar. His daughter has done the most phenomenal job of being the daughter of a serial killer I've ever seen. She's like, she didn't do nothing for a while. And then she, she and unfortunately she looks exactly like him, which also probably isn't helping her ploy the, the, at one point to be we private. But she's just written a, yeah, she's written a book and she's just being honest and, Okay, fine. That was my dad. Let's just get this out of the way. Good yep. move on her part, I thought. Yep. Um, Michael Minnesota. Somerville, Minnesota. she moved to Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what are you going to do? Keep trying to hide? People are going to find out. So just, it's a good idea. I think just go with it. Right. Go, look, I didn't do it. He did it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that bastard. She didn't even talk to him anymore. I wouldn't either as no. soon as I found all that out. Uh, Michael Somerville was meant to be a very funny comedian, also known as the Beer Monster. Mm -hmm. Wichita, first show of the year. Down in the bowels of a 101-year-old theater. Meh, meh, the fire. I'm like, no, uh We just got 1,200 people in here. I, f I, if I ever start shows late, just so you all know, I'm there at 6. It's because I want everybody to be able to get a drink, yep. and I don't want to screw over the opening act. Mm -hmm. I Just 10 extra minutes. That's yep. all I ask for. I'm not pulling some, um, you know, Kelly was two hours late. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> But anyway, I'm done. and the fire alarm, I'm like, no, we just got everybody in. Everybody's got a drink. And then I've realized, like, 
Nobody left. Nobody takes fire alarms seriously anymore. Not in hotels. You know how many times I've walked out in a hallway, a bunch of other people walk, we all look at each other and just go back in our rooms. It, I mean, they, they have to come up with a duff, different thing. Uh -huh. Because this, we did have technically a fire. Five, four, four fire trucks showed up because the popcorn machine caught on fire out front. Oh, no. <laughs> and I went around the side. I knew nobody could see where I was at. Let me tell you what, Wichita, single ladies, smoking hot firefighters. It was like watching Chicago no fire way. or something. Yeah, I was like, wow, the one good look at one, another good look at one. I'm like, wow, they just keep filing out of these trucks all over this stupid fucking popcorn machine. <laughs> just throw water on it. The popcorn machine died a sad death. Well, it's 2024. Let's get a new popcorn machine. <laughs> Jesus God. Everybody just kind of uh, around the bar. <laughs> yeah, none of the, but the people were tweeting me. Yeah. from the crowd going, are we leaving? I don't know. I'm, I'm 17 <laughs> floors down in a bunker, yeah. but I was also so cold because those old theaters, it's not their fault. They just don't have heat, right. especially backstage. Then they put you down, heat rises, it doesn't go down, nope. and the basements are even colder. They do, they do everything they can. They get space heaters and all that, and it just doesn't. I wore long underwear. First time I've worn long underwear on stage, top and bottom. Yep, <laughs> and, and in Tulsa too. Wow. I sure did. Um, and Tulsa was great too, but let me get through these, um, uh, Isabel, who's my unofficial Sp uh, Spanish pronunciation, uh, intern and my street team to get me more, uh, Mexican fans, if possible, mm -hmm. I would like them. She sent me some borracho jerky. I've already tasted this. I don't know what this is. Uh -huh. I've never seen it before in my life. It's, it's really good. Cause it has a kick at the end. It's kind of crunchy. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's all sodium. I'm sure that's why I like it. Oh Yeah. 500 milligrams. Nice. Yeah. You call it stroke jerky. jerky. <laughs> it's really good, though. It's hot. Um, For the beer chaser. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. All right, Isabel. Go tell your friends to watch me on YouTube. Thank you. Moving on. Um, some stuff backstage. Well, from the mail, Heather's on a Bigfoot sticker, which was, I love the stickers. They can keep coming. Um. Dan and Carol gave me that visor. That's who did that. Nice. I forgot. Cool. I did a lot of stuff. Um, they also brought a zombie beer. What I'm drinking today, though, I bought this when I was in Kansas because I love the can, as always. I don't even know what that is, but it also says the Wizard of Hops. <laughs> I love it. Central Standard, Wichita Brewing, uh, Wichita, Kansas. Well done. I like it. Uh, Lisa and Rusty really made the beer monster happy because they brought 18 Bud Lights <laughs> in a thing, like a perfect basket, a plastic basket. I went, here, Michael. And he's like, are these? I go, yep, just for you, because there's already beer in there, but this is your extra beer, and it lasted the whole weekend, so it was great. Some bu Bucky Beaver numbers, nuggets. Then they brought these Casey pretzels, and these are, Casey's is a gas station. I don't know if it's out. I don't remember if it was in California. It's mostly, I know it from the Midwest. My brother-in-law, Matt's a big Casey's fan. You could put every, anything else, a Bucky's, a Love's, and he's going straight to Casey's. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it's fine. I love the pizza. The pizza, yeah. yeah. Well, these are their New Orleans-style pretzel twist. And nine out of ten times, I say don't disturb the original product. This is worth it. Yeah. They're really good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Don't disturb the crust. Well, yeah, they just wreck stuff with trying to season it and a lot of stuff. Oh, that's why it's a tangy combination of salt and vinegar. Sweet barbecue and a hint of spice. Nice. Well done. I was hungry. So well done on both of those. I'll get these out of the way. Um, Carol and Ryan. Now, somebody brought me peanut, a bottle of Pinot Noir and these little hot dog candies, but there was no card in the thing. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. But this is hot dog candy. This looks terrifying. <laughs> but I'm going to do... Oh, it's hard candy. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Tastes like a hot dog. Archie McPhee. Hot dog candy. This tin is really adorable, too. It's really weird. Yeah. I'm not going to eat the whole thing. You want to hear me suck it on candy. No. You can save it for later. That's amazing. Huh. Good. I don't know how they did that. Uh, Carol and Ryan brought some Nebraska Amber Ale. I was loving Amber Ale. Yeah, you can't have too many. Nope. Mm -mm. Perfect after the show. Eric and Julie brought some hair boo bears. Oh, I say it wrong. Hair bow. Hair bow. I always said boo. And uh, this beer. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for that. 
And then we moved on down the road to Tulsa, the drive from Wichita to Tulsa. There were no, no cars. I mean, to the point where you're like, you hate traffic. But then the other extreme of that is, holy fuck. What, where'd everybody go? What happened? Like, did an alien come? Like, it was crazy for miles. Not a car on our side of the road, not a car on the other side of the road. Um, then we stopped at a gas station in the middle of the night, and they had a, a fentanyl test strip machine. I posted a video. Many termites started fighting amongst themselves. I didn't say if I was for or against it. I didn't even understand what it was. I did by the time I left. I'm like, oh, okay. So they're selling test strips in a vending machine, mm-hmm. and and I, you had to use a QO card, a QR. I don't know if they're free. I don't know if they cost money, but you test your drugs for fentanyl. At a truck stop. It, well, it was a gas station, but it was a very normal gas, very clean, uh-huh. very bright. It was a really nice gas station. Um, so I don't know. I just never had seen that before, and then I posted the video. I didn't know it was going to cause all that controversy, but they weren't <laughs> fighting with me. Right. They are fighting with each other. Mm-hmm. Some people think it's good. Some people think it's bad. Some people think... I was just like, I've seen everything, right. and I've never seen this. Right. So Oklahoma, <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know what y'all doing down there, <laughs> um, but that was in the gas station. It was really weird. But Tulsa was nice, and I got to go tour. Um, anybody can go. I was, they just sent me a uh, thing if I wanted to come, and I didn't even know about it. So for you uh, younger termites, the children, mm-hmm. you probably won't know who Leon Russell is. Mm-hmm. Guy from, he's dead now. He died not that long ago. He was in his 70s. Um, uh, old rock guy, but also, I don't know, they call it the Tulsa Sound. But there's this studio down there, much like Muscle Shoals, this recording studio that he he was from Tulsa, and it's called the Church Studio. And it was just the coolest place. People still record there, cool. but it's all been redone, but they kept the authenticity of the old school stuff. Just Google Leon Russell. You'll know a couple songs. I, his biggest hit, I did not love. It was, I thought it was creepy. It was called The Mask, This Masquerade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did love the other songs, though. And uh, some lady got the money. They, they were going to wreck it all, and she saved it, and it's gorgeous and cool. super cool to tour. And he wrote songs, and it played for everybody, from Elton John to – it just goes on and on. So a little educational fun in Tulsa. Nice. I went over to find the Tulsa Driller. The giant, most biggest I statue of an oil driller in the world. <laughs> Took a little video outside of there for this thing. And um, I got a, a backstage from Rachel, a joke writing notebook. Some Montana Big Sky Brewing from Michelle, Melissa, Mary, and Cheryl. Uh, Chip and Daisy, thank you for the beer side. Oh, yeah, the beer side in a wine glass. It was very, very nice. nice. Um, and the last one is uh, Oklahoma Beer. And the best one was the, jack- the gentleman Jackalope. I really liked it. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, so that was great. Anyway, so we're moving on. Um, um, I get, you know, okay, so the foot, the football was on. Uh-huh. And I always have the iPad backstage because yeah. I want to, so Beer Monster can watch while I'm on stage and vice versa and all that stuff. And um, I was very proud to see Charles Barkley, who I love. Mm-hmm. Everybody's mad about Peacock. The, know. You know, I'm like everybody in the world is either at over at their parents' house trying to do it for them uh-huh. or calling them on the phone. If your mom and dad like sports, my mom and dad got to the point and then couldn't figure the rest of it out. And I'm like, yeah, you know, my they're Chiefs fans. Like, yeah. it's just so mean. I said it last time. I won't go off it again. But I was very happy to see Charles Barkley said it was a, it was a really piece of shit move and yeah. that Roger Goodell is greedy. Yeah. And I hope everybody who did it cancels it tomorrow, today, tomorrow, whatever. Yeah. You signed up, yeah. pay your money. Uh-huh. Like um, Lewis said, why not just say the game is five ninety nine? And leave it on network and just charge people yep. instead of, because my mom and dad know how to do that. Right. It's just mean to old people. It's mean to people with old TVs because your TV can't download apps properly. Mm-hmm. Just shitty. Um, you have stupid TVs instead of smart. And the football, to watch the Cowboys lose the way they lost and watch Stephen A. Smith this morning on first take, I... It's I the, the problem to me is Jerry Jones. <laughs> He's Henry VIII. <laughs> And if you're going to work for Henry, you have to know King Henry is, is the king, and you're not. So if, are you going to get a super awesome coach, or are you just going to get some guy who's going to yield to this guy's wishes? Right. So until Jerry's gone, mm-hmm. I don't see how the Cowboys fix this. You can blame the defense. You can blame Dak Prescott. You can blame Mike McCarthy. But his kids are booked. But next week. I know. Yeah. 
And they're never getting, well, it doesn't matter if Jerry Jones dies because his son looks like him, his grandsons looks like him, his nephews, <laughs> they all have square heads and they're all, they, it look, they look like Russian dolls. One pops out of an egg and there's another one and another one. It's, it's never going to end. Nope. So my, for my uh, cowboy f uh, friends, yep. Ron White, yep. for, it, it's buckle in, buddy. Yeah. I don't see it. No, because who wants to work for him? He's doing the press conferences. Shut up, dude. Yeah. You're an owner. Yeah. Nobody needs to see you. Nope. The half of the teams in the NFL, I can't even tell you who owns them. Because right. they don't see them. Right. <laughs> He's out there getting, well, I'm super disappointed, and I think we could have done this. And that, so that's before they interview the coach or the players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks that's, like he's going to have a stroke. He, oh, my God. They, they, normally, they show his box a hundred times yeah. in a game. They were really, really, and I felt the announcers were cheering it on, too. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I was happy to see um, Green Bay. Green Bay, because I like Jordan Love a lot. Yep. And I just, I, even if I wanted to root on behalf of my Texas friends for the Cowboys, I, I'm not going to let myself get involved in that disappointment no. every time. No. Well, we're 12 and 0. Well, you don't get that excited if you beat the Jets. Right. Okay? Really? Yeah. I'm, there's a lot of people, a lot of teams that I think are in college that might be able to beat the Jets. <laughs> I know that people go, you don't know what you're talking about. That's enough about sports. But um, <laughs> moving on to, we have king news, but no queen news. Well, queen news, Tay Tay was at the Kansas City game leading the cheering in the box with Mama Kelsey, the Chiefs. I'm proud of the Kansas City. I don't know if I'm proud of them or they're not smart enough to know better, but I it looked good on TV. All the Missouri and Kansas people showed up. Stadium was full, freezing. I mean, I went to the game in Kansas City against Buffalo weeks ago, and it was like 30, and I bought, it was like a hot chocolate with some liquor in it. I don't know, because it was too cold for a beer. Yeah. Um, so those people, the beer was freezing. props to you. The water was freezing. They yeah. took it out of the thing, and the whole thing just was like, yeah. vroom, like, yeah. wow. They had to stop beer sales. They were freezing <sighs> to people's faces. They should have just sold, like, whiskeys and yeah. hot things. You and make a you shot? Mm-hmm. I'm nine. Mm-hmm. Well, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. What, <laughs> nobody cares. No, so Tay Tay was there in her custom made coat. I did like some lady on Twitter posted, you know, the people that get mad. They're showing ta 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 Taylor Swift, and the, there's pictures on the internet of her in the box, and then people go, this is a distraction. They showed Eminem three times yep. on the sideline, yep. and some lady took a picture of it. She goes, oh my God, they're showing Eminem again. What a distraction. How are we doing? Like, just <laughs> mocked it all back at him. But I like Eminem, too, so yeah. just go ahead, show him. Mm -hmm. Barry Sanders was at the Detroit game. Yeah. I was so happy for Detroit. So yes. I, I hate the Rams. A St. Louis person, we're, no, yeah. we're just not going along with it. Mm -hmm. I don't like, sorry, L.A. people. Mm -hmm. I can go on other sports. I'll yeah. go with the Lakers, but I can't, not the Rams. Um, and I felt good for Detroit. It's been 31, yes. 32, I don't know, years. All my friends used to have season tickets. They eventually all gave them up. Yeah. Now I bet they wish they hadn't. Like King News, Snoop Dogg is joining NBC Universal's lineup for the Olympic Games in Paris in 2024, <laughs> the Summer Olympics. Right. He will provide regular sports as, a, as a, um, a special correspondent in Paris for the Olympics primetime show on NBC and Peacock in the USA. Nice. Yep, yeah. this is because he did it on his own, yeah. and it was really funny. Uh -huh. um, he will be on site in Paris. Wow. To provide his uh, commentary, it was the announcement was made during halftime of the Sunday Night Football of the Packers. Da, 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 and da, 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 da. Uh, he's very excited. <laughs> We're going to see some amazing competition. I will bring bring in Snoop style to the mix. It's going to be the most epic Olympics ever. So stay tuned and keep it locked. Let's elevate, celebrate, make these games unforgettable. Smoke the competition and may the best shine like gold. Peace and love, y'all. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Snoop. That's going to make it more exciting because I like the gymnastics and some of the diving, but I don't really care about. Well, track and field can be exciting. Swimming. Eh, I, don't yeah. I like the Winter Olympics. The Winter. Mm -hmm. are more, they're more dangerous. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go out and do it after this. I don't care about the rowing or the boxing or I don't know. Yeah. I'll find out when the gymnastics. I think most people, it's the number one rated thing. Skate. 
No, anything to do with X Games, I'm too old. No, I just look at you like you didn't have parents at home who would drive you to practice for a team. So you had to learn. No, I, I, it's sad. I know, but I look at them as latchkey kids, like the ones who ride the the BMX bikes. Because if your mom and dad weren't home, you don't get to be on teams. So they figured out how to do stuff on their own. You sound like your father. I do sound like my dad, I know. <laughs> you know, good luck to everyone. How about that? King Jelly Roll appeared before Congress. I love it. So great. He's just a wonderful human being. And he's proof. He said, look, I was part of the problem. He was a drug dealer. He was all of it. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, but he went to Congress to pass an anti-fentanyl bill. Take it from Jelly Roll and former drug dealer uh, turned country music star. I wouldn't even call it country. I'd call it clap. Country rap. Clap. Clap. <laughs> clap. <laughs> there you go. Um, the son of a sitter in need of favor singer appeared before Congress. Tuesday, oh no, Thursday, and delivered an impassionate five-minute statement urging lawmaker, lawmakers to pass an anti-fentanyl trafficking bill. I don't really know what's in that bill. Jelly Roll, his real name, Jason DeFord, addressed the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, channeling his own experience with addiction. In these five minutes, I'll be speaking, somebody in the United States will die of a drug overdose, and it's almost a 72% chance that during those five minutes it will be fentanyl-related. Clearly from the gas station in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, I know it's a problem. I don't I don't know enough about drugs really to even be commenting on any of this. Um, <clears throat> uh, but I'm glad he did this. Um, Jelly Roll does not have a political affiliation, he told the audience, including Sherrod Brown and Tim Scott. Country needs to make more steps to care for people struggling with addiction and prevent more fatal... We do need more addiction. We used to have a lot of addiction... Centers. Mm -hmm. My mom worked at one. Yep. That closed, a, t a shit ton closed. So if you do have a personal problem, unless you're filthy rich and you can do the $50,000 a week bullshit in Malibu, <laughs> yeah, they let them l go out to lunch and shit. I'm like, oh what? God. What kind of... Don't do I've that. had enough relatives in addiction places that that ain't going on, at least in the Midwest. You're not going out for lunch and buying more drugs and coming back here and getting a massage. Right. No. <laughs> Um, America has been known to bully and shame drug, drug addicts instead of dealing and trying to understand what the actual root of the problem is. Um, fentanyl has caused more than 60% of all accidental drug and overdoses. Um, so the bill, the passage of Fend Off Fentanyl, the bill introduced by Tim Scott, he's a Republican from South Carolina, seeks to respond to international fentanyl trafficking by imposing sanctions and anti-money anti -money laundering measures in an attempt to target China and Mexico's illicit fentanyl supply chain. Nice. There you That's go. Great. I know. Now people go argue about this, but I'm just saying what he did. Um, watching him and Bunny walk in was awesome. Watching <laughs> him and Bunny, an ex stripper, <laughs> just walk right in. And he's yeah. he he's got face tattoos. He's yeah. got tears awesome. tears of tattoos. Mm -hmm. He's got a cross on his face. But you know, he is really cute. Like in in real life and stuff, he's a handsome man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. We'll see if they pass it. I don't know. There's not more in the article about what the... Uh, he said, I believe when I sold drugs genuinely that selling drugs was a victimless crime. But he, he said he now knows he was part of the problem. I brought my community down. I hurt people. I was an uneducated man in the kitchen playing chemists with drugs. I knew absolutely nothing. That's my old joke about the meth labs. Yeah, just like the drug dealers do right now when they're mixing every drug on the market with fentanyl and they're killing the people we love. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. I would never do a drug... Um, it involves rednecks and science. That's my old joke about meth labs. I'm like, nope. You know what's still sitting at the bar? Bud Light, mm -hmm. Miller Light, mm -hmm. whatever you want. How about a nice amber ale? I don't need any meth. Um, update! I don't have many updates, so enjoy the few we have. <laughs> there is a Banksy mural worth over $1.2 million, uh, and it's got the European, well, I'll explain it, but... It was of the Euro European, the EU logo mm -hmm. with the stars on the blue and the yellow, stars are yellow. The flag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they demolished the building. What? Yeah. Oh. I know. How do you do this, guys? Wow. A mural painted by Banksy, which first appeared not long after Britain voted to leave the European Union. So on the mural, he's got a guy on a ladder taking a star off. Oh. That's all painted yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. The artwork said to have been valued around it. Uh, 1.2 million first appeared in the coastal town of Dover in 2017, the year after Britain voted to leave the Union in a controversial referendum. Something they probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the mural which adorned the castle amusements building depicted a worker chipping away at one of the yellow stars on the blue EU flag. By then in 2019, a mural which had become a tourist landmark in the town, a major gateway into the EU, disappeared overnight after being whitewashed. What kind of asshole? Yeah. Now, despite the attempts at potentially restoring the work, the, on the building, which was painted on, uh, has been demolished as part of a wider ge- regeneration project. They just said, fuck it. Yeah. We're not doing it. Huh. Um, the council didn't want to spend the money. That's too bad because it was super cool looking. Yeah. You couldn't have just somehow cut that part out? They should have. Yeah. P- we have the technology. Absolutely. Come on. Um, that was my only yeah, some weeks you're, it just there's some. Well, no, I have a lot of stuff. It's just that there weren't many updates. Um, this is a news podcast. This is a new, friendly <laughs> news, funny news, and some just interesting. Holy shit, they found it. This is from my research assistant, Heather, who lives in Arizona. She's so smart. Yes, she gets excited, I think, when she finds them. And then it does save me the work. Yeah. I mean, I know where to look, but. Sometimes I'm busy out there on the road, freezing my ass off, buying long underwear to wear on stage. And everybody, I don't, I just, I can't get over those old theaters. I know it's probably hard to work on the HVAC yeah. and dangerous too, because mm-hmm. everything's so old, but dear Lord. Two space heaters. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, uh, a huge ancient city has been found in the Amazon, hidden for thousands of years by lush, lush vegetation the discovery changes what we know about the history of the people living in the amazon the houses and plazas in the Upano area in eastern ecuador were connected by an astounding an astounding network of roads and canals wow yeah we've just never gone deep enough that's another thing i would do for ransom if i was the ecuadorians i'd say do you want to see your new city we found uh-huh. well i have a lighter and i'm gonna set this whole bitch on fire unless somebody sends us seven billion <laughs> yep <laughs> Pay off our debt. Pay, yeah, pay off our debt as a nation. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sure, you can all come down now and look at the city we found. The area lies in the shadow of a, of a volcano. By the way, my Iceland volcano is erupting again, and Whoa. sadly, the lava has gone into the town of Grindavik, if wow. I'm saying that right. Yeah, three houses have been wrecked, but the people got evacuated again. They'd already been gone for like a month and a half. They let them come home. Mm-hmm. They thought it was good to go, not going to do it, and then fissures started, and yeah. There's a few TikTokers out there I've seen too that it's just a matter of time until they turn until the lava gets them. Yeah. Uh, yep. I, that last video is going to be really viral because you're just going to see you turn into a stone. Sometimes you just want to grab the children and go, you know, you, d- 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 yeah. This d- come come with me and we're going to watch a video about Pompeii before you decide to keep walking over there with your dumbass iPhone. Anyway. While we knew about cities in the highlands of South America, much like Machu Picchu in Peru, it is believed that only people only live nomadically in or in tiny settlements in the Amazon. This is older than any site we know in the Amazon. We have a Eurocentric view of civilization, but this shows to change our idea about what culture is and civilization. It changes the way we see Amazonian cultures. Most people picture small groups, probably naked, living in huts and clearing land. I didn't picture them naked. They always had something on. I don't know. Wow, he went straight to yeah. full porn. This shows ancient people lived in complicated urban societies. The city was built around 2,500 years ago. People lived there for up to 1,000 years. Oh, wow. It's difficult to say how many people live there, but um, scientists say it's certainly in the 10,000s, if not hundreds of thousands. Hmm. That's crazy. It's also a big difference. Well. Tens to hundreds. Well, yeah. that's what they wrote. Paddles, I can't be responsible. This is a hard article. This is a hard place. It's BB News Science. Science. Um, they had a central plaza, and then they had units around that. Um, they had ceremonial buildings, roads. It's amazing. I can't wait till somebody sends a video out of here. Let's see what's really going on. Um, oh, they 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 drank their beer was called chicha. It's a sweet beer. Gross. Mm-hmm. Anyway, holy shit, they found that. How nice. great is that? Let's wait for a special on that. Holy shit, they found it. I have another one. This one I found. This is crazy if it's true. And it sounds true. Ten foot tall people. Ten foot. 
They, wow. Think of how we could change the NBA and make it even better. Wow. We got seven foot over seven footers out there <laughs> now. Some some jackass team shows up with a ten footer. Yeah. Whatever. Ten foot tall people discovered by archaeologists in Nevada cave. Mythology, folklore, and even the Bible tell us that giants once roamed the earth. And as it turns out, there's evidence to back up this claim. Extraordinary human remains have been found in the U.S. state in the U.S. state of Nevada, with some of the skeletons measuring up to ten feet tall. Along their jaw-dropping size, the bodies, some of which were said to have been mummified, were found to have red hair. Wow, what happened? Clearly, my family never got with these people. <laughs> <laughs> this has fueled the theory passed down through the ages that a long-forgotten race of humans once dominated the south, uh, dominated southwestern America. According to the Paiute, a tribe that settled, a uh, Native American tribe that settled in the Nevada region thousands of years ago, cannibalistic red-haired giants called the Sotukau came to the America. They came from a distant island. Um... They soon made a name for themselves as being taller, stronger, and crueler than ordinary men. Oh. Then in 1911, while digging for a bat guano, a key ingredient and in fertilizer, in a cave in the city of Lovelock, Nevada, some miners unearthed a number of strange objects. This prompted the launch of two official evacuations, 1912 and in 1924, which thousands of artifacts were recovered. Among the staggering finds were the mummies, nicknamed Lovelock Giants, which measured between 8 and 10 feet tall. Yeah. They also found 15-inch long sandals that shown signs of wear and a boulder etched with what appears to be a giant handprint. Oh. Holy shit. Yeah. Shortly after the uh, second evacuation, um, no, I didn't say not evac excavation. In 1931, an article published in the local um, newspaper in Nevada claimed that the two giant skeletons had been discovered by a dry lake bed close to Lovelock. Those remains measured eight and a half to ten feet high, respectively, and were mummified in a manner similar to the, that employed by ancient Egyptians. While all of this may sound far-fetched, the legend of these strained people crops up all over the Americas. For example, a Spanish conquistador in the 16th century called Pedro de Leon recorded an ancient Peruvian tale by the, about the giant's origin. He said that the towering figures came by sea in rafts of reeds in manner of large boats, and they were some men were so tall that from the knee down they were the height of a regular man. Wow. Yep. The Indians, all the Native Americans said it too. They all say they were giant red-headed people. I thought so. What the hell happened to them? I don't know. Um, the Sitika, that's what they were called. If you're wondering how such a strong, if they, how they disappeared, the, um, the Native Americans may have the answer. According to the mythology the Sitika waged war on them and their neighboring tribes, wrecking uh, terror and destruction. After years of fighting, the tribes united against this formidable foe. Eventually, the last remaining giants were chased away oh. and sought shelter inside Lovelock Cave. Seizing their chance, the tribes started a fire at the cave entrance, suffocating and burning them alive, those who were left. Yeah. Wow. Think about that next time you're in Nevada. <laughs> yeah. Look around the casino. See if you see anybody. Um, speaking of out west, just letting you all know if you live in Arizona, a wild jaguar, jag, jaguar, jaguar is what yeah. we would say in the Midwest, jaguar. was spotted um, on camera in Arizona. So if you're out golfing and you want to go look for your ball, just remember you get a little too far off. <laughs> There's a jaguar. Uh huh. The, the officials in southern Arizona confirmed the recent sighting. Captured on a trail came in December, and he, this thing is awesome looking. Where is it? Southern Arizona. Just southern. That's all they say. They probably won't say exactly where, because some jackass will go try to hunt, hunt it. it. But maybe, I don't know, is it supposed to be there? Um, oh, well, I'm going to tell you where. It's in the Hockachu Mountains. Huh. Yep. The Federal Run Trail came captured the elusive creature. While the Im images are not yet... Um, to be publicly released, well, it is. It's in this article. A conservation right. advocate said the Southwest had viewed them. The significance in the sighting lies in the contribution to jaguar conservation efforts. So they're trying to, you know, whether this latest one is the same one photographed last year remains uncertain. All of them in the Southwest have been males. The gender is uh, of this one is newly, the newly sighted one is yet unknown, laying another layer of curiosity. Just be careful. I don't go look for a ball in Arizona if I golf. No. no. Rattlesnakes, scorpions, tarantulas, javelinas, um, 
Jaguars. Yeah. The, the very most your ball cost was three dollars. Right. Mine aren't that expensive. Mine are more like a dollar. Uh, Do you want to encounter just a rattlesnake for one dollar? No. 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 Just let it go. Okay. Let let it go. Um, <laughs> the sphere in Las Vegas. <sighs> so you two is gonna phase out. I saw they're gonna stop. I know. You know, like I would go to YouTube, but we, I think I may have talked about this on here. My friend Dorf went, mm -hmm. like if I was going to go to the Sphere, it wouldn't, I can't go, it's the, it's the round ball in Vegas yeah. venue, if you don't know what I'm talking about. They were going to build one in London and now it's a political football. It's now it's not happening. <laughs> it's so sad, London, you're not getting one as of now. They've canceled it. Because it's bankrupt. <sighs> well, no, it's some political thing. They, one party says yes, the other one says no. Yeah. Anyway, you two, like I might have gone, they're fine. I don't love you two. Like I wouldn't buy a ticket. If I got a ticket and I had nothing else to do, I'd probably go. But uh, none of us have somebody done. put on Instagram or something, the moment we all realized none of us really liked you two that much. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, so I don't want to go see like somebody I love uh -huh. at the Sphere because there's too many distractions. Like my friend Dorf likes to go to deadhead things and fish things. That would be awesome because you're not really focused on the musicians. I don't want to see Stevie there because they also look like ants. Right. They don't. No, you want, I want Stevie like just Stevie, in but <laughs> in front of me playing in a band yeah. like the way that, you know, I don't know. But this idea, I would so buy a ticket. <laughs> Miley Cyrus reconsiders residency oh. at the Sphere oh. after MSG doubles back with big money offer because oh. she won't tour. She has said a million times she's never touring again. She doesn't like the road. She yep. doesn't like the buses. I get it, especially with music. There's so many people involved. Yeah. Comedy, I mean, I walk and knock on the back door, and I have a purse with bar napkins with notes on it. <laughs> Just let me in. Yeah. Me, and here's Hello. Michael. Yeah. yeah, let us in. Do you have beer? Thank you. Let us in. Do you have a space heater? Thank you. Thank you. Let's do sound check. It'll take less than four minutes, I swear. If you're good at it, <laughs> it'll only take one minute. And then we're done. So we are so low maintenance that I could see being in a Miley Cyrus thing, like there's just so much going on. I get why she don't want to do the road. But a residency might be a different story, especially, quote, if the money is there. That might be the issue. They've backed themselves into a corner by paying you two a small fortune to sp open the venue. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. Like Dorf just wanted to see. I go, would you go to you two anyway? He, but he goes to everything. I can't yeah. use him. Um, they reportedly received about $10 million for their multi-month residency. Um, Miley's asking for the equivalent or more. She should. She should. Mm -hmm. Ask. You can always ask. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she her. could make her anxiously awaited debut to the stage as soon as 2024 after the Cyrus camp recently restarted talks about it. Wow. They're, not, they're not saying yes, but uh, that's a good idea because I really like her music. A lot of the songs I really like, but I also don't care if I'm really looking at her. Right. Yeah, right. I don't care. Um, the initial offer was too low. She said, nay, nay. Who, I mean, other possible successors? Here we go. Beyonce? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Harry Styles? I don't know enough about him. The children. Boy. The children. <laughs> Love him. <laughs> the children love Harry. So uh, was he in a boy band? Yes, One Direction. He was in One Direction. I don't know any of those boy bands. He's Stevie's favorite. I know Stevie likes him. A lot. Sometimes I'm bothered by his outfits, as a good <laughs> as a good old person should be. Okay, Jack. I know. I sound like my dad. Um, Lady Gaga. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Dead and Company. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And Bon Jovi. I think everybody can agree, though, that Bon Jovi's fun. Oh, yeah. Would I go on purpose? I did. You yeah. did? Oh, God. Bon Jovi, Def Leppard. Oh. Bon Jovi, Def Leppard. I, I was in high school. It was amazing. I, I think John Bon Jovi, uh, Jovi is adorable, but sometimes the lyrics are so dumb, my brain wants to explode in the car. I usually say the, some of the country music lyrics are the dumbest I've ever heard. Bon Jovi. Living on a we're halfway there, living on a prayer. Oh, I'm halfway. It just, I don't know. But the songs are fun. Fish will be there for four nights in April. Um, 
So if you're looking for my friend Dorf, that's exa- he will probably won't even leave the sphere. He'll just stay there all day and night, find himself huddled in a bathroom corner somewhere. Get up, Dorf. They're playing again. <laughs> um, Utah. This is so great. No, I can't wait to go to Utah, but I don't know where the city is in Utah. The dead. See the adorable and deadly black-footed cat at a Utah zoo. This cat is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Cuter than baby cat. It's cute. Yep, it's the smallest thing, and they say it's the the world's most deadliest cat because it has a 60% kill rate. Six out of ten things it attempts to kill, it will kill. Oh, my God. Baby cat has a 1% kill rate. Uh, Chapo, I'd say, has a 70% kill rate. No, he can't be higher than this guy. So I'd say 40. Kato. Kato, 50. Yeah. Kato kills a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> They're both sociopaths. Baby cat's the only one that's civilized yes. and refined. <laughs> Food will come out of the container the when my butler arrives. There's no reason to be running around the yard trying no. to chase a bunny. <laughs> This thing is eight-month-old Gaia as part of a breeding pr- pr- program for her vulnerable species. She's considered to be the world's deadliest cats. Wait, cat, wait till you see the, her picture if you go to the a notes or just go, cat. black-footed cat. She looks like a little uh, tabby cat. She's just got spots and stripes. Giant eyes, though. It's so cute. Um, big cats like tigers and lions have earned a reputation for being some of the fiercest predators on the planet, but bigger doesn't always mean better in the animal kingdom. Just ask Gaia. The eight-month-old black-footed cat who recently arrived at Utah's Hogel Zoo. Where is the Hogel Zoo? I don't know. I Although she may look cute, she's a top-notch hunter. In the wild, they successfully successfully catch their prey 60% of the time, earning them the title of the world's deadliest cat. Salt Lake City. It's in Salt Lake? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I probably have a gig there coming up sometime yeah. in 2024 that's not been announced. Right. Uh, the animals eat between 8 and 14 meals every evening. And just one of the felines can devour up to 3,000 rodents a year. For comparison, big cats have a hunting success rate of around 25%. Oh, my God. But they're in trouble, and that's where Gaia comes in. She's part of a North America breeding program organized by zoos and aquariums that helps a- to aim uh, get the numbers cats uh, cat numbers rebounded. They brought her because they hope she'll mate with a three-year-old male at the facility named Ryder. We laugh and joke about being an endangered species. Um, bum, bum, they're trying to fix it. Um, they're typical than a smaller house cat weighing between two and six pounds. Even so, they're some of the most exacting killers on the planet. They hunt at night using their stellar vision and quickly speed to bounce, uh, pounce on birds, reptiles, insects, and rodents. In captivity, she's eating special food made of organs, skeletal muscle, and ground bone, plus a, hu- a few humanely euthanized mi- mice. That's probably her big treat. It's just the cutest thing. It almost looks like a, a gizmo, the gremlin. Um, oh, that'd be awesome. It doesn't say they're from Africa. That's where they normally live. Cool. Wow. So if you're in Utah, you want to see it. See the deadliest cat, get on down there. <laughs> um, just being picky. Oh my God. Picky. Yeah. Picky. This happened a while ago, but the report has just come out. This is Elon. I feel like Elon's out of control. And Twitter, you know, mm-hmm. I used to get the normal amount of followers, and now they just get taken mm-hmm. away. I don't. Mm-hmm. I just don't let it dissolve. I because guess you I say don't. Things like this. Because I say things. No. Yeah. Yep. Everything I put on Twitter is usually fun. Mm-hmm. It's not. I don't get serious. I don't <laughs> I get political. He he's just letting it die. So I mean, I'll stay and just let it. I'll watch it dissolve. But right. it's it's not. Anyway, in. in the spirit of him being a crazy person, which I think he is, a Tesla robot attacks an engineer at the company's Texas factory during violent malfunction, leaving a trail of blood and forcing workers to hit emergency shutdown button. What? <laughs> the fucking robots are attacking. <laughs> and, and, yeah, this oh was... God. A Tesla engineer was attacked by a robot during a brutal and bloodly malfunction at the company's uh, Giga Texas factory near Austin. (laughs) Two witnesses watched in horror 
as their fellow employee was attacked by the machine designed to grab and freshly cast aluminum car parts. Imagine this big silver thing coming over to you going, Rawr! Um, the robot had pinned the man who was uh, then programming software for two disabled Tesla robots nearby before sinking its metal claws into the worker's arm, Whoa. leading a trail of blood along the factory surface. The incident, which left the victim with an open wound on his left hand, was revealed in a 2021 injury report filed to Travis County and federal regulators, which had been reviewed. While no other robot injuries were reported, um, in 2021 or 22, the Indians, the incident comes amid years of heightened concerns over the risk of automated robots in the workplace. Yeah. Man, if I saw now that, you know, they can do this. I, if I saw one even heading my way, I'd run to the bathroom Absolutely. and lock myself in. Yeah. Heading your way. Um, reports of increased injury due to robotic coworkers at an Amazon ship at Amazon shipment centers, killer droid surgeons, self-driving cars, and even violence from robotic chest instructors have set led some to question the speed speedy um, integration of the new tech. The injury report, um, they said that the guy didn't even need time off work. Oh, I'd need a day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a number of injuries suffered at the factory, but they're going unreported. Yeah, because you know he'll fire you. Right. Even though he can't, because my dad was a work with a comp lawyer. He, well, he, he can't. I mean, he can, but you can then sue him back. We gave him a $10,000 bonus, God. and he didn't need a day off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This underreporting, this lawyer said, even included the September 28, 2021 death of a construction worker who'd been contracted to help build the factory itself. My advice would be to re uh, read that report with a grain of salt, the lawyer said. We've had multiple workers who were injured and one worker who died whose injuries or death are not reported uh, in these reports that Tesla is supposed to be accurately completing and submitting to the county in order to get tax incentives. No, I don't trust him. No. He's not going to. Um, one, well, I keep going on, but I mean, just, this is all lawyer stuff after that, but just heads up. If you're working at one of those places, if that thing starts coming over, like he's your friend, right. he's, he's, he's not. not your friend. Yeah. No, he's been programmed to do something to something that's not alive and he's going to do it to your ass. <laughs> Jesus. This is where the, you know, he would not think twice about that. I don't think, I don't think he, uh, what's his face would care. No, he would just be like, well. Okay, we have a little restaurant news. Oh. Yeah, it's yeah. quite it's quite a little segment. So, who still knows where a Friday's is? Ooh. No. They did a whole Jack Daniels thing. Remember? Jack Daniels? Jack Daniels ribs and Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels ribs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. And then they disappeared. When I was like in high school and college, we all loved it. Yeah. Their potato skins were the best. Oh, yeah. Um, their bar was fun. Mm -hmm. Their nachos were good. I didn't really eat real food there. I think because we always got there late because I got off work bartending. Yeah. yeah, they do have chicken sandwiches, hamburgers, ribs. Mm. I just ate the, all that stuff, T appetizers. Um, but I haven't seen a Friday's. So last year at some point I did a gig in Niagara Falls on the Canadian side and there was a Friday's. And I remember going, holy shit, there's a Friday's. I didn't know. We're always a little behind. I, Canada, <laughs> I know. <laughs> You guys still don't know who shot Jr. on Dallas. You don't know what happened at the end of Sopranos. No. What happens to Tony? Nobody cares. We're all gonna oh, it Canada. <laughs> we stand on guard for the. It's a wonderful anthem. Um, this is shocking. There's still a ton of Fridays left. I don't know where they're hiding them because nobody's on the road as much as me outside of a trucker. TGI abruptly. TGI Fridays abruptly closes 36 underperforming restaurants sells eight more to former CEO. Now, I did go to one. It was somewhere in the Midwest. Maybe Iowa. I, I can't remember. I don't know. And it was bad. Like, mm -hmm. there there was no employees. But it was also just out after COVID. So I can't, you know, everything was weird then. Yeah. I mean, lack of employees and so on and so forth. But I was like, oh, man. And they had done nothing new. Menu was the same. Sign was the same. Yeah. Casual Dining TGI Fridays abruptly um, announced it's closing 36 underperforming restaurants. I would imagine there's a lot more than that that are underperforming. 
photos on social media showed some of the locations had posted a notice on the door that read, we, re- we regret to inform you that Fridays had made the difficult decision to close our doors effective. I think it would have been a, <laughs> be funny if it said effective Friday. <laughs> no, it was effective January 2nd. As part of the closures, T- TGI Fridays is offering more than 1,000 transfer opportunities, which represents over 80% <laughs> of impacted employees. Oh, it's a Dallas-based company. They refe- revealed the surprise closures Wednesday. It also said previously corporate-owned restaurants in the Northeast will be for- sold to former CEO Ray Blanchett. He served as the chief, uh, the CEO for Fridays for five years. He resigned in May as a restaurant chain creator of the popular loaded skin potatoes. Yeah, that was great. Their potato right. skins were great. Their salads were good, too. They had good ranch. Um They're going to go through a new phase of revitalization. Boy, I don't know where you start. I don't know. Power washer. He's got, he's, then they say we're the ones he's got. They've yet to reveal a definitive list of which outposts in the states have closed. The company is owned by a private equity firm, Tri Artesian Capital Investors, and its financial results aren't released. The website there says there are more than 850 Fridays in 55 countries. Look at us spreading wow. potato skins all over the world, oh, making the world fat. Such a hit. 275 are located in the United States. Yeah. Termites, do you have a Fridays by you? Where do you live? <laughs> Send an email to the team email I'd like to know. Oh. Um, uh, a spokesman for Fridays declined to comment beyond what was stated in the press release. By strengthening our franchise model and closing underperforming stores, we are creating an under... You know, closing the underperforming ones, I guess, fine. They're not If they're not making money, fuck it. But that's not really going to, that's not, that money that you're going to save from those six is not going to help the 269 that are left. No. That is not the answer. No. Our top priority has always been delivering a superior, superior experience for each and every TGI Friday's guest. And we've identified opportunities to optimize and streamline our operations to to ensure we are best positions to meet and exceed on, and on that brand promise. (laughs) I don't know. Can it be saved? What do we think? Terms, rights? I don't know. It would take a lot of money and a lot of, I mean, advertising. Yeah. And you're going to have to think of new shit. Or go old school and go, remember our ski- potato skins? We haven't been seeing you in a while. And then they could specifically go, Kathleen. If you promise them to be like they used to be, I'll be there in a second. They were gigantic, too. They were huge. Were yeah, you only needed one or two. Yeah. And then you were full. It was great. Taco Bell. Moving on. A lot of restaurant news. They, Taco oh, Bell yeah. unveils a new value menu with shockingly low prices. All of this reminds me of my nephew, Xavier. I could just see Xavier <laughs> just going, because he's in his 20s, and they eat whatever they want, right. and massive amounts of, it just, they have 10 items worth $3 or less. I mean, is that even food anymore? No. I think gum's a dollar. Come on. Might be more. Grandma hasn't bought gum in a a long time here because Grandma has spent bazillions of dollars on implants and crowns, and gum ain't worth pulling crowns Mm -hmm. off. Nope. Mm -hmm. Taco Bell will launch its updated uh, um, value menu with 10 items less than $3. The new cravings menu is available at 7,800 outlets on Friday and features six new meat ditches and four existing vegetarian items. The vegetarian items include, well, I have an old joke in one of my specials about they should, every year they should receive Restaurant of the Year Award because they only have four ingredients and they keep coming up with new things. Exactly. They just pe- put them in different things. It's in a tortilla. <laughs> now, oh, look, now it's on chips. Oh, okay. It's it. <coughs> We're going to make it chicken. Okay. Their ve- vegan items include the cheesy roll-up, the spicy soft potato soft taco, just potatoes in a taco, mm-hmm. cheesy bean and rice burrito, and cheesy fiesta potatoes. Um, they have a, these are the meat ones, some of the meat ones, double stack taco, the stacker, cheesy double beef burrito. They're just throwing more shit in there, Uh but they're charging less. I mean, I don't, this is all about getting people in and they do it and they're fast. Their drive-through is fast. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) yeah, you can, you can go look what else. Yeah. I'm not going to go through this whole menu. It's ridiculous. Well, this one, I it's fantastic. I mean, $1.99, double stack taco, two two nineteen stacker, cheesy beef flavor stacked together. You get it. You get the idea. Fantastic. It's just shit coming out of a window, but it's yeah. good. It's good. Last restaurant news. This one, I don't know why this makes me laugh so hard. Well, because I've experienced it with my 
younger brother and sister for their birthdays. Um, major U.S. food chain may see a resurgence oh, after it almost went bankrupt in 2020. Chuck E. Cheese was no. the only place for kids in the 90s and early 2000s to have their birthday party, meaning millennials and Gen Zers have fond memories of the pizza chain. So my youngest brother and sister is 10 and 11 years younger than me okay. at their birthday parties and then their friends' birthday parties. If you could get a Chuck E. Cheese, it was available. It was just it's like a casino for kids. It's like crack. The, and then you could always ferret out the attic kids because they'd be like, I don't have any tickets. Give me some money. Because the tickets would come. They had a live band. The live band was just phenomenal. But I always used to think those are real musicians in those outfits. How has it come to this? Like, if you could play the drums, how did you end up in a mouse outfit? At show? Whatever. I don't remember. Um, it was fun, though. And they had beer. I remember that. I don't remember if they had wine. I remember drinking beer. They had to have beer. Sales slowed in the yeah. early 210s. The animatronic robot and his band appealing less to children. Oh, maybe it was all animatronic. I don't know. I thought there were people. <laughs> then the COVID, <laughs> the COVID lockdowns forced it into bankruptcy in 2020. It emerged from bankruptcy, and although many sites say shut, it has slowly and quietly been attracting new customers and getting old ones back. Good for the tiny, tiny children. <laughs> Your birthday party is back on it, Chuck E. Cheese. The pizza, though, was awful. Like, as an adult, you got to pre-eat before you go there. Don't count on the food. But the experience was hilarious. Um, Reuters is saying it's working with investment bank Goldman Sachs after the, Sachs after the company showed interest in buying it and returning it to its former glory. That's right. It is tipped to be worth $1 billion. A billion? Chuck E. Cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. An auction is expected to attract interest from private equity firms and companies like Dave & Buster's, who operate similar businesses. Dave & Buster's, I didn't think it would make it, and they keep opening new ones. True. I don't know. Everywhere. I've yeah. gone to some stuff there. It's fine. I, would I think of going it on, you know? No. no. But I don't like I don't care about game, video games and shit. Um, they have real games. Real games? They have games on. Well, I like Papa Shot. That's the only thing I like. I oh, the games. sports is on? Yeah, it's like a Buffalo Wild Well, game. that's fine. Could this mean a reform, a return to Chuck E. Cheese's glory days? Well, part of the modernization Did they have has glory days? yes, Chuck E. Cheese had glory days. <laughs> oh my God, Patrick, my brother, he must have attended fifty birthday parties at Chuck E. Cheese's in his heyday. <laughs> yeah, part of the modernization has been getting rid of the famous Chuck and his band and replacing them with video screens of the characters and a dance floor. Oh boy, oh, That's sad. Grandma doesn't want to get rid of the band. Yeah. A dance floor. Chuck E. Cheese was mostly for littler kids, yeah. not like teenagers that want to dance. Your nieces dance. My nieces dance, but the, yeah, they did. I can't even argue that. When they were but like, when, yeah, but they went to real bars with us. It was so funny because this bar in the Ozarks closed. It was called Pickle Pete's, mm -hmm. and they were in the back. They were like three. And they were like, that's our favorite bar. And I'm like, you know what I like about this family? That you're three and you have a favorite bar. Exactly. Because we take you to all the boards. But, yeah, they like to date. I don't know. I just don't see no. a date. The video screen's fine. Um, soon, just one restaurant left will have the full band. And where is that located? Northridge, California. The company's remodeling all 400 US, U.S. locations. And the other roughly 30 with the animatronic characters will lose them. And the phasing out began in 2017. Well, oh, I'm wow. gonna have to find some birthday party and get invited and see what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chuck E. Cheese, God, God love them. I hope they make it for the children, for the tiny children. It wasn't, it wasn't for like over, over 12. I think the kids would have felt stupid in there. It yeah. was like under 12. Um, I don't have enough money. Maybe I'd buy it. Turns out I'm a billion short. Yep, <laughs> yep. Somebody call the lady from L'Oreal. She's got a hundred billion. I'm calling her. Hey, would you be interested in a children's birthday pizza joint? Thank you. I thought you might. I'll All right. <laughs> two two cruise ship stories, and these will be fast. This is where. To, uh, no, 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 no. Terrifying moment. North Sea cruise. First of all, I'm never going in the North Sea. Period. No. The videos on Instagram of the North Sea and TikTok 
of boats in the North Sea. It's the most terrifying shit ever. This has British tourists on board. Uh, was struck by a road wa rogue wave. There's videos all over TikTok. If you want to put that in there, you'll see. Sending people sliding around the floor, knocking out power, and forcing it to be towed to Germany. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh it's a, it was a ferocious storm in the North Sea. The, first of all, the, the guts you have to have to get in the wintertime on a tourist cruise ship to get in the North Sea in the winter. Why do they have that? Because they're, I don't, well, the, the other one's going to Antarctica. This one, they're going to see the Northern Lights. You can fly. Fly to Canada. Yes. Get out of an airplane. My sister sees them every day. Yes. Paddle sister sees them every day. Yep. Outside of Calgary. The luxury cruise ship, which was carrying 400 passengers and a crew, had started a 14-day Northern Lights expedition sailing from Tilbury on December 9th and was due to return to the Essex port on December 23rd. Dramatic footage. Um, they have footage of this rogue wave. The TV screen went black. The ship's horn distress signal sounded. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. God. They, they expected it to be a, ru a rough ride going over several other big waves. However, this one, everything became undone. Tables, chairs. Oh. They said there were no serious injuries except the people like me that probably would have had a heart attack. Exactly. Um, and then it's just other people's videos. It's, this And then this one, these people. Terrifying footage shows 95-foot waves crashing over luxury Atlas World Voyager cruise ship it makes, as it makes its way through a ferocious storm with 115-mile-an-hour winds off of Antarctica. Oh, my God. 95-foot waves. What? I don't even understand. Terrifying footage yeah. has yeah. emerged from the luxury cruise liner. I don't need to go to Antarctica. You go to our IMAX. There's lovely movies <laughs> about Antarctica. You can watch the penguins, march of penguins. You can watch all kinds of things. There's just... This is crazy. They went through the they went through the Drake Passage. There are movies about people dying in the Drake Passage. I mean, I give these people credit for trying. If this is your lifelong goal, I'm just saying it's nothing I could ever be. Maybe not this time of year. Right. Yeah. Well, you're not going to see the northern. You, can you see the northern lights in the sun? No, it's only the winter. Yeah. Uh, well, then they got to go now, paddles. Fly. Fly. Just fly somewhere yeah. and get out and rent a car like a civilized people person. <laughs> uh, the the cruise okay. ship was tra traversing the Drake Passage. The spot at which the Atlantic and the Pacific uh, oceans converge between the southernmost tip of South America and Antarctica, and when it, Antarctica, when it was caught in a, puni in a punishing tempest, winds of over, up to 115 miles an hour whipped the, ship, the sea into a frenzy and sent 95-foot waves slamming into the luxury ra a yacht during the perilous journey. Wow. Uh, and this is in December of 2023. Tables, chairs, everything was floating around. There's water all over the place. Uh, deep water. I mean, oh. the crew managed to navigate it, uh, and they reached its destination, Ushuaia, in, in southern Argentina, without suffering major damage. I mean, you don't know that they're going to be able to navigate it. No. You could all just, like a shipping container, those shipping container things that get caught yeah. in the Indian Ocean, and then you flip and you're all dead. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's... uh. It's the roughest crossing many of the crew and staff have ever had. Uh, you just the the sh the boat's four hundred thirty feet long. The wave is ninety five foot high. Oh my God. Yeah, I can't. That's geometry. I can't do that. But I'm sure that was terrifying. <laughs> You're not um, on but just saying, it's just not my thing. God love everybody getting on a cruise ship. Those people that went to Canada instead of the Bahamas. I mean, yeah. yeah uh, the answer is no. No. Um, okay, this. Well, I want to say this one. I'm going to say that one too. <laughs> Warren Buffett. Me and Warren would not get along that well. I can tell you, can no. tell you that. Um, this was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. You got and a you, new Warren. What? You got a new Warren. I got a new what? You have to do Warren. I'm going to do Warren. Okay, good. But this was, um, this was the cutest thing I've ever seen. So this teacher in Texas... Um, she gifted, uh, she decided that for her kindergarten, first grade class, she was going to take everybody on a Southwest airline flight to Mexico, oh, but they're not really going. Oh. No. Well, she can't take everyone's children. Say, no, well, no. So she made the whole classroom. She rearranged the chairs like a Southwest flight. 
but first she made them come through TSA. She set all this up on her own, like a real experience. They had to have passports, but they're fake ones. But they made their own passports. They took pictures of themselves. They cut them out. Like, just a wonderful, okay, this is going to be busy work, but it's fun. But it also teaches them how you fly. So they understand... And then she even passed out snacks like a flight attendant to <laughs> each row on the plane. And then she had a video of a plane taking off, and she's like, here we go. This It was the craziest oh, thing. Great. Um, the, and then the company, Southwest, who, yeah, sometimes uh -huh. I should talk them, but they always get where you want to go, and my bags have never been lost. So I'll give them their kudos. Nope. Um, sadly, I've flown back and forth to see my parents so many times I, I made a list and I think <laughs> you're supposed to get excited about that. I was like, oh, Horrified. it's fine. Southwest <laughs> is fine, but there are not, the employees all seem very happy. Okay. I like that. So they must like their jobs. Okay. Um, Southwest, uh, they come, they also gifted all of the first grade teachers and the school principals with round trip tickets to anywhere the airline flies to. So That's this awesome. is, a, yeah, cool. she did a video on TikTok. Um, she, the video was posted by Sonia White, an elementary t teacher in the Dallas area, her meticulously preparing for a fun learning. She took pictures of each one for their passport. They had the boarding passes they, that she did the safety instructions. Oh <laughs> and then she played YouTube videos to make them feel like they were flying out and then pass out in flight snacks. They landed quote in Mexico. They went through customs. They exchanged their money. She taught them how to exchange money. Cool. Uh, they got they ate at a restaurant set up in the classroom, which included an authentic dishes of Mexican food provided by some of the parents, students' parents. Um, it got millions of views on TikTok. But she said, we don't have a lot of money, so they have to make up stuff to do. And I'm like, that's a lady who really likes the kids. Yeah. This lady should get, like, teacher of the year. That's cool. Um, they were, the students were greeted by Southwest employees in their headquarter building. They got to go to headquarters after this video went viral. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, How cool. Yeah, that was great. Uh -huh. So go on TikTok. You can see the video. It's very funny. Notes. Yeah, it was great. Um, okay, Warren Buffett. And then I have a super feel-good story. Ooh, yes. Yeah. I like that one. Well, Warren, well first we're going to do Papa Warren. <laughs> <laughs> now, nobody's mentioning that clearly Warren is on a spectrum. And my nephew's autistic, so I, I speak with full, most a lot of knowledge about all this stuff. Nothing, nothing negative about that when you learn how to work with it at all. But that doesn't mean Warren's ways are going to fit everyone who's not on a spectrum. Now I've decided he's on a spectrum. I don't know. I don't know that he's ever said that. But uh, he, he his routines are very spectrumy. Um, maybe he's just tight with a buck, though. I don't know. Could be one or the other. Sometimes there's no diagnosis for whatever is going on. Um, these are things that he says that we waste our money on, meaning middle-class people, and we could learn from him. Okay. okay? Consider these 11 things. As in, he suggested that poor people and middle-class people will waste money on. Okay. You can avoid these financial pitfalls and set yourself up for a wealthier 2024. Okay. Number one, your home. The cost of living does not equate to the standard of living. I wouldn't live better if I had eight houses, if I had a 400-foot yacht. He bought his house in Omaha 55 years ago for $31,500. And yet, despite his earnings, he hasn't seen a reason to move. It's warm in the winter, meaning the house. It's cool in the summer. I have everything I want. Plus, it has all kinds of good memories. Okay, <laughs> Grandpa. The, you know, so people, it's not that I need it. Maybe I just want a different house. Right. Maybe I'm tired of this house. Maybe maybe the memories aren't good in this house. Maybe you gotta move. I'm leaving. He could have purchased must I've seen it. I you can go to the house in Omaha. Drove right up. It's on my Instagram somewhere. Yeah. It's not there's better houses in that neighborhood, I can tell you that. Well, it's, it's a fan it's a good neighborhood. Like there's a lot of old, really Tudor looking. It's a cool neighborhood. Yeah. But it's very normal. Right. Anybody can drive right up to his house. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it's very dark. I'm yeah. like, somebody looks sad in there. I don't know. Um, Everyone is sad in there. Um, and just because you bought a house 55 years ago, I just, I know what he's saying. You don't need to buy. I do have friends that buy houses that are way too large for what they need. I get that. That is kind of a, quote, waste of money. But new cars. Okay, I'm with Warren on this. I have a 2007 Mercury Mariner, and I'm not giving it up. But it's only because I'm in love with it. Right. You love it. 
I would go get a new car. And if I was going to buy a different car, I would buy a new car because I don't know enough about used cars to trust to know what I'm buying. Right. I would just go in and say, here, give me a GMC Acadia. Here's my car. And tell me how much I owe you. I don't even negotiate. I don't even, the whole thing is, ugh. I was so excited when Saturday came out and said, we're just going to do one price. It's on the sticker. Fuck you. Yes or no. And then I went to go buy a Saturday and then they had already gone out of business. Oh, there you go. I guess I was the only one that was excited about the no negotiation part. Right. <laughs> he says, don't buy a new car. It would probably take me half a day to go through the exercise of buying a car and reading the owner's manual and all that. That's why he doesn't want a new car. He doesn't want to read the owner's manual. I've never read one in my life. I know. <laughs> I know. You only need that when lights come on and the car doesn't work and you're on the side of the highway. That's when somebody goes, get the manual out of the glove compartment. <laughs> And then you have to go through this whole thing and go, what is that a picture of? The thing that lights up. Is that a battery? Or um, if your older car is still working, you aren't pouring money into repairs, put that time and money into something else, he says. Car and home maintenance. Well, you're going to have more maintenance on an old house and you're going to have more maintenance on an old car, Warren. True. Yeah. Learning how to do basic repairs on your home. Ow! Okay. No. I'm not, I have no interest in learning anything about a car engine. No. And God forbid somebody let me attempt that. That would be a terrible error on everyone's part. Mm -hmm. Just, um, he said, master basic do-it-yourself skills that could potentially save you money on repairs and tweaks. I wouldn't get in a car that I worked on. No. No. I wouldn't either. For sure something ain't going to work <laughs> now. If I thought something was broken, it's definitely broken now. Yeah. That, is not, that is not, that is not a, 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 a a realistic tip no. dining out he says we shouldn't go out to eat to it's no secret that eating out he goes to mcdonald's every day but he sticks to his two dollars and 12 cent thing if the oh. stock market is up he gets hash browns if it's not he does not talk about self-punishment yes yeah, i can only have hash browns if the market's up wow cents. little opus day creepy <laughs> it's no secret that eating out can take a huge bite out of your budget um Go banking rates recently put, put, reported that a steak dinner cooked at home can cost less than even a cheap fast food meal. Some of us don't have time for that. No. That means I have to go get the steak, then come home, cook the steak. I yeah. could have been through Taco Bell, already eaten and been home. For $3, too. Similarly, the cost of meeting friends for happy hours adds up. <laughs> well, like Warren's ever gone to a happy hour. No. Please. <laughs> Instead of inv investors, we recommended hosting small gatherings at home. No. It's a lot easier to say to my friends, meet me at the bar. Right. Because then I have to worry about, is the house clean or whatever. Especially dive bars. Right. Yeah. And ha some happy hours. I mean, I know one here, not far from here, and beer is $2. What? Bottle of beer for happy hour. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 People at your house, you don't know. You invite people over, they could steal shit. Yeah. You don't know. All your friends steal stuff. My parents yeah. steal the most out of this house. <laughs> I went in to get a paper bowl for something for baby cat. All of them were gone. But yeah, like I, like I alone used 75 <laughs> paper bowls. And I'm like, God damn it, I bet she took them. My mom took them. Well, I didn't think you'd use them all. <laughs> well, how about leave me one? Maybe I won't use 75, but that's the package they catered them. It was going to be good for like a year. Right. <laughs> um, credit cards. Warren doesn't like credit. That, that, I agree with him. That does cause a lot of problems, especially with youngster. It caused problems with me. I had a... Because at one point I was trying to get that home loan a long time ago. And my brother goes, do you have a credit card at Victoria's Secret? I said, Patrick, I have a credit card from anywhere that offered one. Right. Yes. Because in your 20s and 30s, you're like, I get what? Right. $12 off this right now. Right. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I'm signing up. There was one, my sister um, and her friends, when they were like in their 20s, one of the, her friend's older brother was a money guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, shit, now I can't think of. Oh, he, she was like, yeah, so I'm like having these money problems and I'm trying to get like this and that. And they're saying my credit is bad. Can you look at my stuff? So he went and looked through it all. And he goes, you and your dumbass friends need to stop drinking liquor and doing shots at whatever bar Banana Republic is. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was a bar. Banana Republic. <laughs> She's like, those are my work clothes. <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay. Uh, Warren says, don't gamble. Warren, how do you think I get through wo most weekends of my life when there's no sports on? I gamble on shit I don't know about, and that's what makes it fun. Exactly. 
He says no lottery tickets. Well, he's never won on a scratch off. You don't know the fun, the fun. Uh -huh. Oh, risky investments. Well, I'm guilty of that if you consider Bitcoin to be risky. Mm -hmm. But I only risk enough that I don't care if I lose it. Right. And right now it's worth double. By the way, Bitcoin on fire. <laughs> Ethereum on fire. <laughs> I haven't talked about it in a while because it kind of went in a tank and now it's all back. Mm -hmm. Never invest in a business you cannot understand. These are risky investments. Well, I would agree with that. Um, always research a business before you invest in its stock and don't be afraid to seek the help of a financial advisor or whatever. He says, don't buy the latest, latest gadgets. I'm sure I'm sure Warren's wandering around Omaha with a flip phone. And a VCR. And a VCR. Uh -huh. And his, the tapes work fine. I can watch Jaws again. Watch this. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Warren didn't upgrade his flip phone until, it says it, until 2020. Oh he God. purchased an iPhone. So I'm sure he's got the first one ever made. He probably doesn't even know if he went online and sold that. He could get a billion dollars. <laughs> right. And then... Um, a lot of guys want the earlier iPhones because they were smaller and go better in your pocket. At least so says my brother. Huh. Yeah, the tinier because they just keep getting larger and larger. And huh. the iPhone like four, yeah. those were super weeny. Yeah. I, I have a broken one in my desk. Don't buy low quality products. It's a low quality product. <laughs> I, lo I love it when Donald Trump would call it. You're a low quality person, Chris Christie. <laughs> a low quality, low quality person. person. I know he loved that thing. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. But here's the problem. Um, nobody knows what quality is anymore or not. Let's say you go to Best Buy or you go to Target to buy a TV. I don't know what's quality or what's not quality. They all look the same. And they're all within kind of the same price range. Here's a little something I learned, though. You should ask the people at Best Buy or Target, is that a 2024 model? Because they have the model. They can look that up. And they sell TVs in there, the cheaper ones. Not a lot cheaper. A few hundred dollars. It's like a 2022. Yeah. But that does matter for downloading apps and streaming. And anyway, I learned that the hard way. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> so he doesn't like wasteful purchases. He doesn't really say what that is. He doesn't like unused subscriptions. Probably most of the stuff we do is wasteful. I have a lot of unused <laughs> subscriptions. Yes, everything I do is a wasteful purchase, uh -huh. according to him. Final note. Um, live within your means. Don't spend money you don't have. Everybody does because you gave us credit cards. Warren, right. before that... I can actually remember, I'm old enough to remember when you could not use a credit card for groceries. The first time they allowed that, I was like, what? I can get you always had to pay cash. Wow. That's what led to my mom going, put that back, put that back. And she had that red little counter that had three little white buttons, like a little clicker thing. And she went, ah, ah, ah. That was fascinating. You showed me that. Yeah, it was totally fascinating. Um, uh, live with your men don't, and don't spend money on things you don't need. Well, you don't need all, there's I learned from moving, I got my whole life down to two gym bags. There's all kinds of shit I don't need, right. but you like them. Right. Warren? So. Get your wealth. <laughs> yeah. Warren? Not so. I'm not into it. I got 19 hoodies. I don't want to live with you. <laughs> I have 75 bar t shirts, and I like each one of them because I had a good time in that bar. <laughs> this is the greatest story ever. And it's your, it's your nation, Paddles. Great. A wild goose was taken to an animal hospital. Later, his mate knocked on the door to find him. Oh, oh. <laughs> Heartbreaking. No, it's a wonderful story. No, it's not. They made for life. I know they made for life. Mm -hmm. as, if a, um, as if a Canada goose named Arnold isn't endearing <laughs> enough. So every time you see geese and you get annoyed that they're going to the bathroom on the property, which I do frequently, uh -huh. just remember they really do have like a little soul going on there. Um, and they're really uh, sweet, even though I've had a few hiss at me on golf courses. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, whoa. Yeah, there's a mean streak. There is a mean streak. Yeah, they're wow. snappers. Wow. They're snappers. Snappy yeah. Snappy geese. <laughs> they're sweet when they're sweet, but they're not when they're not. As if a Canada goose named Arnold isn't endearing enough, his partner who came looking for him when he was injured is warming the hearts and have us root for this sweet feathered couple. Aww. Cape Wildlife Center in Barnstable, Massachusetts, stared the, shared the story on his Facebook page in what they called a first for their animal hospital. It was a Canadian. It happened in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. but they're Canadian geese. We often have people ask if they can visit the patients they dropped off, but we today we had our first animal visitor. <laughs> For the safety of our patients, we do not accommodate visitation requests, but in this case, we made an exception. Uh, he's a Canada goose that lives on a pond near the facility, and, part, and the pair 
is part of the mated pair of wild geese that have been together for several years. The center said the geese usually keep to themselves. And then I can't read that particular sentence. Wait, I can't read that. Um, but one of them noticed Arnold was walking with a significant limp and kept falling over. They were able to capture him and bring him to the hospital for an examination. A goose visits it, um, wait, upon exam, our veterinary team found out that he had two option fractures on his foot. That means the tissue in the skin would have been pulled away, leaving the bone exposed. Our best guess is that a snapping turtle or another predator attacked him while swimming. To save his foot and help him survive, the staff knew they had to amputate one of the digits and suture the other wounds closed. They gave him antibiotics and pain meds and prepped him for the surgery. Then his mate came knocking, and there's a picture of it knocking on the front door of the animal hospital. He's banging his beak, or she, I guess. I don't know. Today, we, as we prepared to sedate Arnold and get him ready for surgery, we heard a faint tapping at the clinic door. We turned to see that his mate had waddled up onto the porch and was attempting to get in. She had somehow located him and was agitated she could not get inside. Um, she remained... She remained there throughout the entire procedure, watching us work, never moving from the doorway. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Surgery went well, and when once Arnold woke up, the staff decided to let him recover by the doorway so he and his mate could see each other. We opened the door and gave Arnold his flow-by oxygen in the doorway. His mate immediately calmed down and began to groom him through the door. They both seemed much more e at ease with each other's presence. Oh, the article actually says, oh. He needed, he needed several weeks of treatment in our hospital before he was re, able to rejoin his mate uh, in the wild. He will be kept inside for the majority of the time in order to uh, keep his wounds sterile and prevent infection. We'll do him back to get him uh, out, out the doorway as soon as possible uh, so that his mate can be with him. Uh, so there you go. Feel good story of the day. I love it. Yeah. Yay. Isn't it amazing? She could probably smell yeah. and know where he was. They're real smart. Or maybe she watched him. And followed them. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There's your feel good story of the. Oh, yep. Wonderful. Termites. Yeah, that'll be a Disney movie too. <laughs> <laughs> Disney will ruin the movie though. Because yeah. they'll kill somebody's mother. Yep. Because that's what the Disneys do. <laughs> they kill. Oh, there goes my Loch Ness monster. All right, termites. I'm going to. Hey, we added a show in Anaheim, California. Mm -hmm. The Grove. Mm -hmm. I love that place. Mm -hmm. It's super fun. Um, so that's been added, and here's the list of wh where every, everything is happening out on the road this week. Santa Rosa, Wheatland. Those are makeup shows. Thanks to everybody who kept a ticket. That was when the health thing with the parentals broke down and I had to cancel. Um, San Luis Obispo, Monterey. That's the week after next. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Scottsdale, Chattanooga, Chugu, Chuchu, Chuchu. Atlanta. Ch I said Atlanta. No, oh, I didn't? Okay. Atlanta, Cobb Energy Center. Uh, Huntsville. Royal Oak, two shows, Dayton, Indy, San Antonio, Austin, Marietta, Ohio, Cincinnati, Terrytown, New York, Wilmington, Delaware, and then Anaheim is April 26th, in case uh -huh. you termites want to head out there. And Thousand Oaks is uh, the 27th, so that's a little Cal California weekend. Nice. Cal a lot of California weekends. It's far to fly, but I usually have fun. So that's it. Oh, Dolly quote, Tay Tay quote, then we're out of here. Sometimes I forget these. Random. I open it up. We're getting back into it. <laughs> um, through the years, this is Dolly. I've always used my femininity to my benefit. I never slept with anybody to get to the top, though. If I slept with somebody, it's because I wanted to not to get from point A to point B. That was discussing men during an interview in Bust Magazine. Huh. Tay Tay. Let's see. Probably a different quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. This is what she wrote in the, or said in the Daily Beast in 2017. Songs for me are like a message in a bottle. You send them out to the world, and maybe the person who you feel that way about uh, will hear about it someday. Oh. Hmm. Depends on what you wrote. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of hers are fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another reason I decided you're an asshole. <laughs> Uh, fantasy football, I lost by a half a point to my friend Kathy Aww. Lewis. Lewis was in the bottom. I finished second. Um, that just shows you people, every point counts in fantasy every single week. I literally lost by a half a point because Philadelphia fell apart, and I had their kicker, and I had Jalen Hurts. I just, you know, like Different choices next year. Different choices, yeah. But a second place paid. And right now I'm in the playoff bracket pool, and I have won three out of four. There have only been four games, nice. and there are only five of us who have done that. Nice. 
The only one I lost was I did pick Dallas over Green Bay. I'm sorry, Green Bay. I love you. Um, but I just fell for what everybody was saying. Mm-hmm. Even How though. Good that they lost. Yeah, just to watch. Yeah, that's How about the kids? The Children's League, I dominated. Nice. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of sad little fuckers sending me $1 bills. Um, yeah, that, that's too. Um, and and my dad came in second. I don't know why he's in the Children's League. Which, I don't even know how he got in there. And I'm like, he beat you guys, and he had just had a stroke. He did good in the Adult League, too. But now it's, everything's back to normal-ish, so his, his picks are... Uh, now they're not as good. No. I'm like, yep. Yeah. No. Okay, so Stevie's going to say night, night, two nights. Creepy. Creepy. Yeah. 